A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Kate and Oliver Hudson, <laughs> host of the new podcast, Sibling, Sibling Revelry. Revelry. That's right. We started this show because, you know what? No one talks about siblings and that dynamic. The siblings, they know each other better than anybody. Yes. You know. Listen to Sibling Revelry on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Frugal Friends, Episode 6, Here Comes the Bride. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Hey, y'all. This is the Frugal Friends Podcast. I'm Jill. I'm not Jill. Oh, my gosh. I'm Jen. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Oh, we got there. <laughs> I don't know where I start and you end. <laughs> we were just wondering if we were going to have enough funny things happen to make bloopers. And it seems like we will. Yeah. But in reality, I'm Jen. And I'm Jill. And this is the Frugal Friends podcast. We're super excited today. Uh, Because we get to talk about something really expensive. (laughs) Yeah, that's why we're excited about it. Yeah, we get because I I love spending the big bucks. Um, Really, on some things, but not on weddings. So, yeah, today we're talking about weddings, and since there is so much that can be spoken about weddings. Uh, we're only going to cover ceremony type stuff uh, in this episode, and we'll save stuff in the reception for a second episode to come at a later date, depending on how much you guys like talking about saving on weddings, which probably will be a lot of you. Yeah. We'll see. So hold hold your butts. It's coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but today, so we looked on the internet and found out what the internet had to say about a few key elements of the wedding and ways that you can save. And we'll, uh, we'll let you know what we think about them. Jill and I have both had a wedding each, one wedding each. One, one each, so far. So far. And mine was pretty big, so I've always wanted a small wedding. And I think that comes from having a very small family and being an only child, And I wanted to marry into a family that was bigger. uh, And I definitely got it. And that also came with a very large wedding. I think we had 180 people. Um, And it was much larger than I thought it would be. I think I had like five family members. And we invited, I think, 75 friends came And so the other hundred were just his family. Mm. So we had to do a lot of frugalizing to get our wedding to be affordable, basically. (laughs) What about you, Jill? Um, Yeah, we had a big wedding. I mean, compared to our culture, like in our friend group, um, yeah, my social work brain just goes nuts when we, when it comes to like weddings, because it's like, it's cultural, it's, it's all these things. But anyways, <laughs> for us, we would have described it big. There were about 300 people who came to our wedding. Oh my gosh. Um, for some that's big, for some that's not very big. Um, yeah, for us, that was our priority. We wanted 
everyone to be there. We wanted our friends to be there. We didn't want to not have people because we couldn't afford for them to be there. So we made decisions based on that priority. Um, and I loved it. Oh my word. Like, I'm glad that I'm still married to my first husband and I don't need to have a second wedding, Mm -hmm. but oh, what a great day it was. Yeah. I definitely don't ever want to have another wedding, but so glad I had a wedding and so glad that I was able to invite all the people that I wanted to invite. Um, so we're definitely, Jill and I are not the people that are going to say elope at the courthouse to save money. That's, <laughs> I d- would like to make that clear. That is not us. We <laughs> love a good party. Yeah. Yeah. And so we want you to have a great party too. And uh, sure, eloping is definitely a way that you can save money on your wedding. Uh, but let's be honest, like everybody loves a good wedding. So yeah. I love, yeah, I love I mean, going to I- weddings. I'm not going to lie. Like I did talk about eloping a ton, especially during the planning phase. I was like, come (laughs) on, let's just elope. All I really want to be is married. But yeah. Yeah. Other people are important. It's good to have, it's good to have friends and family there. Celebrate the commitment you're making, make it feel like it's a commitment. You know, there's something about like the day and making it a day that's like, yeah, this is a real thing that I'm committing my life to. Yeah. And there, so there are some things that I was unreasonable about with my wedding and we'll talk about that later, but it, it's definitely worth it. So Mm -hmm. I think if you are questioning whether you should do it or not to save money, like don't feel guilty, have the things that you care about at your wedding and then yeah, just enjoy the day because it's just one day and you should be able to enjoy it to the fullest. Like Mm -hmm. don't, yeah. Um, don't worry. Don't worry the frugal out of the fun. Ooh, look at you. Don't like that. Don't worry the fruit. I'm going to have to think about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe put that on a bumper sticker one day. Yeah. I, I have things to say about bumper stickers, but that's for another day. (laughs) (laughs) we will we'll save that for our car episode jill (laughs) yes oh my word i have so many opinions especially about bumper stickers you have opinions on a lot of things jill (laughs) and i love that about you it's it's why i love talking to you but okay so let's just dive into this first article so if you are googling how to save money on a wedding Uh, One of the first things that you are going to come across is this BuzzFeed article, which is 33 insanely smart ways to save money on your wedding. So, and there, of course, there are a lot of ways and there are a few of them I liked, a few of them I didn't. Um, The Mm -hmm. first one that I liked uh, was number four and it's find a venue that doesn't require you to use their vendors. So I almost feel like I take this one for granted because when I was planning a wedding, I was like, well, duh, of course the ones that require you to use their vendors are going to be more expensive because it's like an all in one, you know, Mm -hmm. inclusive venue, but it's not. um, So I guess people think it's harder to, find a venue and then find all of your other vendors, but it's so much cheaper and it's not actually that much harder. Um, and honestly, some of the things that you would spend money on using their vendors, like you could just do yourself and not actually like a bartender. You don't need a bartender if you're just bringing in wine, which is what we did. We Mm -hmm. just did beer and wine. Um, but I guess it comes down to your priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's like, that's the theme of probably all of this is like identifying what's your priority and everybody's going to want to go about it differently. Everybody's dreamed about wedding, their wedding for different amounts of time, but yeah, fundamentally for us, this is what it came down to. Yeah. My priority was having pumpkin beer. (laughs) I got married in October 
and it was the beginning of, of October. So I wanted to have the first pumpkin beers of the season. Nice. Yeah. So I got a keg of like, <laughs> gosh, an odd, like a, like an Oktoberfest and then some other pumpkin beer. And I was so disappointed because I only got one glass and no, I know that How was that my, happen. Yeah. That was, that was my biggest regret of my wedding day is that, uh, I didn't get to drink more beer. <laughs> I love your priorities and I also love your regrets. Yeah. Is that okay to say? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, but, oh, it's uh, a great wedding regret. Yeah. I, and you know what I don't regret? I I danced a lot, even though Travis was busy saying hello to a hundred people, <laughs> which I said hi to them too. Yeah. But From once it was floor. done, he kept talking to them and I was like, bye, because I knew that I would regret not dancing at my wedding. Yeah. So I was like, I just gotta be me. And- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish we would have known you then. I know. We would have we would have had a really good time. Yeah, I would have danced with you. Thank you. All of and my I would have, other friends. I would have made you drink more beer, too. I probably would have done that. You know, I had... So everyone was keeping me accountable on dancing, but I just... I didn't realize I would need somebody uh, to hand me beers throughout the night. So <laughs> so if that's something that's a priority to you, appoint somebody on your wedding party to yeah. bring you beers. Yeah. So uh, back to the article, number 15... I also liked that one, and that was the, oh gosh, scrolling down, choose a venue that doesn't need much decor. So we Mm. did this specifically. We got married at the St. Petersburg Shuffleboard Courts. It is the largest shuffleboard courts in the world, and it was built in the 1920s, so it has, it's just white walls and green courts, very 20s vibe building. And they had some like a few strings of lights over the court where we got married. Needed just no decoration. It was just simple Mm. and beautiful. And also the fact that it was cheap and you had to do a lot of things yourself because, you know, it was cheap. Like that was just it. Like we didn't want to get married at a church uh, because it was just, we've seen that before, even with our church, it's, it's pretty well, you know, decorated, but people still have to put like a lot of decoration into their wedding. But we specifically picked a venue where we wouldn't have to buy like a ton of flowers and stuff. We had, um, hydrangeas, just like a, Mm. one bouquet of hydrangeas, on every table and that was our centerpiece because that's all you needed yeah that's awesome how about you jill i liked number one in this article about choosing like not being super picky about the day of the week that you get married on um for us we just did everything cheap so this wasn't necessarily our situation but i have seen a lot of people do this where they're either getting married on a on like a friday I like an untraditional time or a Sunday, or we've even had friends get married on a Monday of like a holiday weekend um, because the venues just offered discounted rates for those days. And, you know, people still have off work on Sunday. The Monday was a, was definitely non-traditional, mm-hmm. uh, but people came, like people took off work or, or went in or, you know, did a half day or whatever. So, um, yeah, if that's something you really want to save money on, I think that that's a great tip um, to consider. Uh, as far as ones that I disagree with, I don't know if I can shift the conversation there yet. But um, I <laughs> Let did us dis- know. Yeah, I did disagree with number two, the taking your time. I mean, yeah, and it, again, it depends on where you're coming from, what your circumstances are, like what your priorities are with your wedding, but. I feel as though taking your time with like, you know, this, they're the writers talking about, they took two years to be engaged and plan their wedding. 
Um, for me, I feel like that has the potential to add a lot of cost because you've got more time to think and plan mm-hmm. and Pinterest and be picky about what colored napkins and this and that and the centerpieces. And then you might change your mind and you, you've already bought all these things because you got excited in the moment. Now you don't like that anymore because it's two years later. Like you want to yeah. do something else. Um, so I, I mean, Eric and I, we were only engaged for three months, so we only had three months to plan our wedding. So that, that's definitely to the other extreme, but I did find that it allowed me to hold the wedding with an open hand and like be concerned about, you know, the bigger details, but then the other things that just don't matter. Like, I don't care. I didn't care what color the napkins were. Therefore I didn't spend money on it. (laughs) Um, so I, I just don't, agree with the taking the time piece. I, yeah, I would second that. I also don't agree. I think it's also funny that you were only engaged for three months and you thought multiple times about getting eloped. I was, (laughs) yeah, I was engaged for five months and I also had a few times where I was like, I wish this wasn't happening. Um, I would love to hear somebody who, who didn't, who doesn't think that like every person who I know that's been married was like, yeah, I was there. Like there's so much stress, which is another element to talk about too. (laughs) Yeah. And some people think that there's more stress if you shorten your engagement, but I would say that there's, I would disagree with that too, because at, if you're having like a two year long engagement, one year is just going to be people asking when's the day, what are your plans? How's the wedding? Uh, and then you're, just getting tired. I was getting tired Mm -hmm. of it after five months. And Mm -hmm. then the last year is like all of the details that you have to be worried about. So yeah, don't. And in reality, it all comes down to the last two weeks anyhow. For sure. (laughs) Everything needs to come together in two weeks, no matter how long you're engaged for. Yeah. So don't be, don't be engaged for less than two weeks. That's my recommendation. (laughs) That's too short. Unless you're eloping. Unless you're eloping. But, um, so my least favorite thing on this list is number 12, fake your wedding cake. And (laughs) I think that's the dumbest idea ever because you're going to spend money. So the recommendation was that have a baker make a fake cardboard cake, decorated cake, um, and have just the top layer real so you can cut it and you can pretend and you don't spend all this money, but like, but you still, the cake is not the thing that you pay for. It's all the decoration. Like that's what (laughs) takes the time. And so it's like, and honestly, I've never seen anybody do that. Mm -hmm. That would weird me out. So I'm sure somebody's has met somebody that's done it, but Mm -hmm. If you're going to, if you want to save money on something like that, just either just do the small portion of the cake and just cut the rest of it uh, or, or skip it. Like, but why would you make a fake cardboard cake? Yeah. To each his own. To, I guess. Um, (laughs) But here's our opinion. But here's our opinion. I think (laughs) that you shouldn't spend money on a fake cardboard cake on the other hand if you wanted to keep your cake with you forever oh you could that's do that. real weird <laughs> and you want to set up like your por- porcelain dolls around it and like put little dresses on them and pass it down to your uh, daughter who of course is going <laughs> to want the same exact things you wanted when you were getting married uh, yes. and you will definitely have the same tastes and they will definitely want all the same things all of it. All of it. So that will definitely happen for, you know, women that want to pass things down to their daughters. <laughs> we know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. 
to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. Oracle.com slash strategic. Anyways, uh, our second article is all about wedding dresses. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, Gosh, Jill, how do you feel about wedding dresses? How (laughs) How was your experience with that? You sound like you remember my story. <laughs> oh man, it was a journey to get to my wedding dress. That's for and it was sure. Only three months. It was a three month journey. Yeah, I know, I know. But it was it was up and down in that short amount of time. It was there were some hard up and ups and downs. Yeah. So I I'll yeah, I'll tell it again. It'll be a repeat for you, Jen, but you're you're gonna love it. I love it every time. <laughs> yeah. So I only had three months. That's that's been said. But um, so you know, I did your typical just like wedding dress shopping, but wasn't wasn't seeing what I wanted. I'm not the one who's like, oh, I've had my wedding planned like since I was five. So I didn't really know what I liked, but I started researching hard, looking up pictures, all that came across this one gown that I just thought was beautiful by some designer, can't remember the name now, but like started to like then get in this like rabbit hole of trying to look up this designer, this specific dress, how could I get it cheap, you know, all those things. And so this one website came up that like, oh, we do knockoff dresses and they did this one specific dress that I loved. And I was like, for $99. And I was like, this can't be real. It's probably not real, but I want (laughs) to give it a try. Like $99. What's the worst that could happen? So I was, so I said like, you know, I'm going to try this dress. If it doesn't work, then I'll just wear my sister's dress. Cause it fit me fine. Like knew we were the right size. You know, we were the same size. I had tried on her dress. So I pulled the trigger. I spent the $99 couple weeks later, it came in the mail. I was in college at the time. Um, this dress was made in China. Obviously, where else are you going to get a wedding dress for $99? <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? So I'm in college, and my mom calls me because I had it shipped to her house because I was assuming it was going to like come in a big package. I couldn't have it shipped to me at school. So my mom calls me, and she's like, um... I think your dress is here. And I'm like, yeah, like, you know, and the kind of like debating in my head, do I want her to open it? Do I not want her to open it? Like, I kind of want to be the one to open it, but like, what's her hesitation? What's happening? <laughs> She's like, um, it came in an envelope. And I, I was like, <laughs> what kind of envelope? What are we talking about? I didn't have a smartphone at the time. So there wasn't a way to be like FaceTime me or like send me a picture real quick. Like what I'm like literally picturing just like a white, you know, envelope. I'm like, it can't be. That can't be. You know, like, did did I order a doll's dress? What happened? (laughs) And she's like, um, yeah. Like, do you, so do you want me to open it? She's like, I mean, maybe it's the right size for a wedding dress. I just can't imagine 
oh man, how'd they fit it in this thing? So finally I was just like, yeah, just open it. Like I, I'm just so curious. So it turns out it was like one of those, you know, like, um, uh, paper sized envelopes, like one of those orange envelopes, like eight by 11. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so she opens it and she's like, Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Hmm. And I'm just like dying on the other end. Like, what are we talking? Like, like you, like not what you thought because it's not your style, but like it would totally be something I would want. Are you just like, Hmm, can't believe that they could fit it in here. Like, what are we talking? (laughs) And she's like, okay, like it is wet. It is a wedding dress. It's like a full, it's a full size dress. It's not a doll's dress. Um, there's a lot of material. There's a lot of material. And I'm just like, what does this mean? Like, yeah, there should be a lot of material, but like, where is the material in the right place? Like, oh, where is the material? I, I like, I wanted so badly to just like get in the car and book it home. Anyhow, long story short, although I'm probably just making this a long story. I did finally make it home that weekend. It was nothing like the pictures. Like the the sleeves were not the same. The beading was not the same. Where the waistline was, how it went out. I, I wonder if I should just like post a picture in the show notes of like what I wanted and what I, I got. I <laughs> yes. would love to see that. Uh, was I, just... I would love to see what you thought you were getting <laughs> next to what you got (laughs) because I haven't even seen it oh my word it was just like I mean some bride somewhere would 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 probably be happy with what I got but it was nothing what I wanted and it was in that moment that I realized I don't want to wear my sister's wedding dress. Oh like, my gosh. I know I said that. Like, I know I said that, but I said that to get what I wanted. Like, it was just a <laughs> means to an end. Like, just because I wanted to try and just say, like, yeah, I got a $99 dress from from China and it was exactly what I wanted. And it's just like none of it, none of it was what I wanted. And that now at this point, we're probably like two months away from from, you know, walking down the aisle. So I was in just like full-blown panic mode, ended up finding like an off-the-rack dress, like, um, you know, one of those ones that like you try on to see like if you like it, that like all all the other brides in the showroom have tried on, like it's your (laughs) standard size 12, but I loved it. I could see the vision for it and ended up spending as much on alterations as I did on the dress. Um, so mm. that, that's something to consider, but I loved it. I loved my wedding dress. Um, so long, long journey to, um, <laughs> ended up, ended up good in the end, but spent a lot more money than I probably needed to. Although in the end, I think my wedding dress, dress and alterations combined was like $750. So still frugal compared, but. Way more than ninety nine dollars. Yeah, um, yeah. I I also spent as much on alterations as I did on the gown. Um, but gosh, your story is the best. I love it. Yeah, um, and you know what? You're welcome. Woo-hoo. You know, to everybody listening, like you're welcome that I tried it. For all of you who are like, oh my word, is it really like, can they really knock it off? Because everything else I own is from China. Like, that's my thought. You know, everyone's like, oh, it's cheap. But it's like, but everything I own from is from China. And and some of it's not cheap. Like some of it's a good yeah. brand. Like I, not everything that comes out of China is cheap. Maybe this is one of those times. And it wasn't. It wasn't. I had the same thing happen, um, not to my dress, but to my bridesmaids. So I wanted (laughs) them to all pick, like I wanted them all to wear the same dress, but I wanted them to pick it. And they ended up picking something cheap. Like I knew they would because like they're my friends (laughs) and they picked one of these dresses from China and they've had uh, plenty of time to get it in. Like that wasn't the issue. Um, and as they started to get them in, they were just like so ill fitting, like not <laughs> just very elastic and hugged in all the wrong places, ill fitting. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they had to pick something. They just picked something from David's bridal because they were scarred. And I felt bad because I was like, maybe I should have just told them what to buy. But let's be honest, like I would have 
probably pick something from China too. So then it would have been on me. So <laughs> yeah. if you are considering buying something from a discount dealer in China for your wedding, <laughs> uh, just don't. And yeah. advise we've been the rest. There. Yeah, yep. we've made the fails the, for you. Yeah, advise the rest of your wedding party to not do it either. So, uh, but this, so this article is from womangettingmarried.com. Uh, and uh, so womangettingmarried.com actually has a new podcast out. Uh, if you are a podcast listener, which if you're listening to this, I hope you are. And I mean, if you are, you could also subscribe to our podcast and listen to it all the time, which would be really cool. Uh, but you can also listen to this one if you're interested in weddings. So it's five easy ways to save money on wedding dresses, because that tends to be the most Googled uh, phrase in regards to how to save money on wedding things. And so out of the five, my most favorite one was uh, number five, look for a non-wedding gown. And that is exactly what I did. So yes, I am completely partial to it. I <laughs> went to David's Bridal and I actually didn't know that I was doing this. I just wanted something cheap and danceable uh, because I only wanted to dance at my wedding and ended up, so it was between, I wanted something with some bling. I thought I did. And I went in there and, you know, tried on what I wanted and it just wasn't right. So the girl brought me this white, really simple white dress and it was $150 and I loved it. It was what I ended up wearing on my wedding day. My mom actually bought a, she bought a headband from Claire's that was, like diamond metal and she bought two of them and she took off the elastic part and connected them and put them as like a little um, empire waist kind of belt thing. She just like sewed it onto my dress. So that was like my little bit of bling. And nice. um, later found out when I was looking at David's bridal for one of my other friend's weddings, uh, I saw that exact dress in multiple other colors because it turns out it was actually a bridesmaid's dress that I had worn. I like it though. Yeah. Uh, I don't regret it and I love it. And so that's why I think it's a good thing because you can find, you don't have to wear like a short dress or mm -hmm. a prom dress or anything. You can actually find like dresses and just like long, beautiful dresses just because they're not labeled wedding, it makes them like 10 times cheaper. Yeah. And my mom also had a coupon for David's Bridal because we are cut from the same cloth. And no <laughs> pun intended. Uh, and so we actually got the dress for $100. And yeah, I spent $100 on alterations just because. Oh my gosh, you did get your dress for basically $99. Oh. Yeah. Um. But because it was a it was a bridesmaid's dress, Jillian, it was yeah. a bridesmaid's dress. Yeah. Uh, but there was something I was on the edge of wearing a size smaller. And if I could have fit into the size smaller, I would not have had to get it altered. But because I wanted to be comfortable, I went with the bigger one and it was just a little too long. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to get it slightly altered. But. And they make dresses on purpose to be altered. Like, that's a thing. Mm. A dress that you buy off the rack uh, in your size is designed differently than a wedding dress in your size. You, They are designed awkwardly so that you have to get them altered. Interesting. So that is something I discovered after trying on a lot of dresses. So it may even be worth your while just to go to like Dillard's or Macy's and see what you can find. Yeah. I liked number two and three. I'm just blending them. Basically like the rented or pre-owned idea. Mm -hmm. I, I wish that this was more of a thing when, when we got married. 
Uh, it just wasn't. The wedding market has just boomed in the last five years. Like so much is different. Um, but this is definitely something that I would have looked into more at the time if it was Mm -hmm. more of an option. Um, because now my dress just sits there. Like I, I get the idea Mm -hmm. of like wanting your own dress, but yeah, I mean, you're only using it for a day and and it matters like how you look, how you feel that day. But after that, like you're just, you're, you're, I mean, you're not weird to try on your dress again, but you'd be weird to wear it any other time. <laughs> like there's no other use for your wedding dress. Um, so I, I like that. I think it's a non-traditional approach and, and can make it attainable for people to have a really beautiful dress or not a high ticket price. Yeah. And I would, I mean, I would gladly let somebody else have my wedding dress, but like, that's just something that you don't want to get secondhand. Even if you think you do take Mm -hmm. it from Jill, you don't, (laughs) but like I was thinking about doing like a trash the dress photo shoot one day. Mm. Um, but like, yeah, until then it's literally sitting in my closet in my office doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, it's better for the environment, I think, to do secondhand and rented. And even if it's, even if you spend a little more, you get a better dress and you are not like playing a part of the fabric just sitting in your closet and wasting away movement. Yeah. It's more environmentally friendly, too. So for those that are interested in that aspect, it's more sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. So the most expensive parts of a wedding definitely are. So dresses are one of them, depending on how you get them. Mm -hmm. Um, But there are. Four other parts that I think are super expensive, at least as far as the ceremony is concerned. So one of them is the venue. Um, one is rings, photographer, and flowers. So those are the top, for the most part, venue, rings, photographer, flowers. Those are pretty expensive. So we wanted to go through and just kind of talk out what we did because we had uh, really inexpensive weddings, but we still included, obviously, all four of those elements in our weddings. Mm -hmm. So uh, I already talked about my venue, and it was a beautiful shuffleboard court uh, owned by the city. So that was another factor in making it cheaper. Uh, It was not a private venue. Jill, where did you get married? Um, We had our ceremony and reception separate, so I'll just talk about our ceremony. Uh, We got married in a church. We got married in May, so we were back and forth on whether or not we're going to have an outdoor wedding or not. Landed on just doing indoor because of concern of rain. So we had to shop around because we needed a place that would hold all of our guests (laughs) So that, yeah, that's what it came down to was space and cheapest place to go. Um, and that, that ended up being this church. I think we paid like $300 to use the, the church. Okay. Rings. I love talking about this one because we actually got, um, Travis's wedding band was my grandfather's. So the, mm. we only paid money to like get that resized, but my ring is from a pawn shop and people whenever they ask because my ring is rose gold and it's like very ornate and whenever they ask like oh your your ring is so beautiful where'd you get it I'm like I got it at a pawn shop (laughs) it's like my favorite thing about it um but yeah so I've actually I've written about this before about how pawn shops are like hidden treasures um, mm-hmm. on the bad side of town. And so, but there are 
So I probably wouldn't have bought a ring at just like a, you know, a gun and electronics pawn shop. But there are specialty pawn shops just for jewelry. And that's where we went. And this ring was listed at like $1,600. And we were looking and I loved it. And I probably gave a little too much. Like I, we had a budget. And so I was like gasping and like, oh my God, I love this ring, but it's definitely not in our budget. Mm-hmm. And because I was so firm about the budget and um, it was listed at 1600 and uh, he's like, okay, so what's your budget? And I was like, 800. And uh, so, I mean, <laughs> you I say just, like that 800. <laughs> yeah. I, like it. Uh, I was just convinced that it was not going to be in our budget. And I was like, that's as high as we're going to go. So I wasn't yeah. trying to like, you know, highball it just to see like what he could do. I was just really honest with what our budget mm-hmm. was. And he, you know, he went back and talked to his manager like he was at a car dealership <laughs> and came back. There out. was nobody back there. Right. I don't know if there was anybody <laughs> back there. He came back and he was like, yeah, we could do 800. And uh, nice. so I was shocked. Yeah. Uh, they didn't even try to negotiate with me. Wow. Makes you wonder if he could have gone lower. I know. That's Travis was so bummed afterwards because he was like, man, I could have gone lower. So, but I was You love it. I love it. Yeah. So this is just your wedding band you're talking about. So this is just my engagement ring. Oh, Um, oh, oh. okay. The wedding band. So I was not going to get a wedding band because I love my... Engagement ring has filigree on, you know, either side. And I didn't want to cover any of that up. Mm. But my mother was convinced that I needed a wedding band in order to be married. To show all those guys at the bar. Right. You're not just engaged. You're committed. Yeah. um, Because that is definitely what they're paying attention to. (laughs) And I was like, I'm not paying to get a custom band made for this ring that doesn't need it. And she was like, what if we went halvesies on it? And uh, there were a lot of things I said no to her on. And finally, I was just like, okay, we'll we'll go halvesies on this. But so now, so I did get a custom band made for it um, that fits flush on it. But honestly, I wasn't going to get one. I don't think I need one. And, And that's like another way to save money. Like, yes. There are a lot of wedding sets at pawn shops, and they will negotiate down. Um, They'll negotiate even more if you're paying cash, and they are, you know, fantastic quality. We had it appraised afterwards, and they said it was worth about three thousand, you know, for whatever that's worth. Um, So yeah, it's it's definitely worth researching jewelry pawn shops in your area. Uh, because uh, we got a fantastic ring, and there were many mm-hmm. other fantastic rings there. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. How about you, Jill? Yeah. Um, similar vein for our engagement ring. Um, Eric got mine at an antique store. Well, antique slash consignment store. Um, so this particular one had like antique rings and wedding bands and that kind of a thing. So that's where he found my engagement ring and yeah, got got a great deal on that. Actually, yeah, it was like $800 as well. I haven't gotten mine appraised yet, but I do imagine that it is worth far more than that. So and it's beautiful too. Like it's um very yeah, vintage looking and I love it. And he could not get nearly such a beautiful ring at, you know, your traditional you know, ring stores. So, yeah. Um, and then for wedding bands, I think we just got our wedding bands at like Kohl's or something like, (laughs) like every mom has their 30% off Kohl's coupon and Kohl's cash and yada, yada. So we ended up spending like $150 on both of our wedding bands combined. So yeah, we just went super cheap on that too. Yeah. I have, uh, seen a lot of people because I, work out a lot and the silicone rings 
have mm. been super popular. Um, they're from Kalo, Q A L O, and they have been coming out with some great designs and colors, and like even stackable bands for women now. And part of me is like wanting to just wear those, mm. and those are great for like obviously whenever you get pregnant and your fingers are too fat for rings. Um, <laughs> but like, I'm, I don't know if I didn't love my ring so much, I'd probably just wear a few of those stackable ones mm-hmm. and be done with it. Cause yeah. they're cute nowadays. And yeah, they are cute. I've tried them on though. They're, I find them super uncomfortable. Like they spread your Ooh. fingers too far apart and then they just feel like sticky, sweaty. Hmm. So I don't know. I would say try it out. Like try on a friend's before getting them because I I did not like it. Good point. I have yeah. one. The I don't wear it much because I think I got too small of a size. But Travis wears his all the time because he's mm. working on airplanes, right. and it's really easy to get a wedding ring caught in something and then you yes. know ripped yes. off. Yes, yes. So, I have actually heard way too many horror stories yeah. about people losing their ring finger like oh my gosh it yeah so you know what yeah there's a reason to put up with a sweaty silicone situation because that won't rip your finger off yeah so even for practicality i think it's it's worth checking out those silicone rings Mm -hmm. we get our weekly groceries delivered through instacart because once football season starts game time is family time I can get everything my family needs for the week, from reliable staples to specialty ingredients, all delivered right to my door in as fast as one hour. So I can stay on my game without missing a minute of the game. Visit Instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time, minimum order $10, additional term supply. Instacart. Add life to cart. This episode is brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. It's a special thing to be a member of Navy Federal. Because they are a member-owned, not-for-profit credit union that invests in its members with amazing rates and low fees. That's why members could earn and save more every year. Plus, they serve all branches of the armed forces, veterans, and their families. So if you're interested in becoming a member, learn more at NavyFederal.org. At Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. Insured by NCUA. Uh, Jill, what did you do for your photography? Yeah, we got we got lucky on a lot of levels with our wedding. So people are probably going to be like a little bit frustrated with all of my tips <laughs> because they're not always translatable. Um, we just have, well, I should say Eric has a lot of friends and a lot of friends who are very willing to just like do things for free. And that's not the case all the time or especially with the way weddings are right now like everyone's like look I went to school for this or this is my business and I'm not going to do it for free for you and I respect that um but for us we had two photographers one was Eric's brother um who who is a professional he doesn't do it professionally but um he's got the eye he's got the equipment so um he agreed to shoot our wedding and then Um, a girl who was just starting out. So she was a good friend of ours who wanted to get into wedding photography. So it was kind of like a good give and take because I was like, yeah, I'll trust you to shoot our wedding. And then you now also get the exposure and are able to use all of these photos to like launch your business. Um, So that was like a good partnership for us. You can't always find someone who's like just starting out and wanting to do, do a wedding for free, but it was good good for her. And we were willing to take the risk on like whatever kind of editing skills she had. And then to have the backup of like both Eric's brother and this girl and with like two different eyes. So we got two very different sets of wedding photographs because of just like their different styles. So that was fun for us, but um, we didn't pay anything. And we got all of the photographs like versus when you pay a photographer, they're like, you pay generally just for like, you know, 150 edited photographs or whatever. It was like certain ones they edited, but then they just, they gave us all the shots that they took, which was nice. Yeah. We also had, um, Travis's friends, they gave us a discount, uh, to 
do the wedding photography. And I had so many photography friends and I was really nervous to ask any of them to do it because I wanted a discount. But yeah, I respected their time and their talent and I just Mm -hmm. didn't want to ask. So we just decided who's most likely to give us a discount and we went with them. So, but they gave us edited photos and some prints and it was really great. We, we spent just about $600 and like they didn't do, they didn't go all out. Like obviously they were still guests at our wedding and we gave them seats at a table with their parents and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we did have two photographers and because one of them was somebody who's just starting out and wanted to go along, you know, with them to get experience. So that wasn't somebody we knew, it was somebody they knew. Um, but that was really helpful. And so, yeah, we, I think everybody knows somebody who's a photographer. And I mm-hmm. think everybody knows somebody who's starting out. And mm-hmm. so it just depends on, again, what you prioritize. Uh, If you're going to have just this really simple pared down elopement and you want fantastic photos, pay for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you want a big party with everybody there, then, you know, don't do a lot. Don't spend a lot on photos. Mm -hmm. It's it's just what you prioritize. And I do regret not being more specific with the photographs I wanted um, because, you know, they... I don't know if it was a photographer thing or just they like didn't take it as seriously because they were, it was such a deep cut, but we didn't get as many photos with our family as we thought we would. And there was a lot of photos we didn't get just because we didn't know to ask for them. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting somebody who's starting out I would definitely look online for like a list of traditional photos that are taken at a wedding and then just send them the list of photos that you want, Mm -hmm. um, photos that you don't need. Uh, I know some photographers will send a list over, but if you're working with a new photographer, they may not do that. So be proactive and make sure that you get the shots that you want with your family because you're going to get some great candid shots during the ceremony. Like that's for sure. Um, But I think it's the family shots that we missed out on because we just didn't know to ask. Yeah. Good suggestion. Uh, Yeah. And as far as flowers go, uh, we had a family member who was a florist. And so one of the big things that people say to save money on is doing fake flowers And if you can do that, that's great for you and you should, but I did not want fake flowers. Mm -hmm. That was a non-negotiable for me. I wanted real flowers. So luckily we had a family member who had access to like good prices and she wanted to give us flowers as a gift. So we did not pay for flowers, but we also didn't have a bunch of flowers. Like I said earlier, we only had, um, one bouquet of hydrangeas at every table We didn't have any flowers anywhere else besides boutonnieres and bouquets. And uh, our boutonnieres were just very simple. And uh, our, like, the bouquets were super simple as well. Um, It was just like a bunch of different colored flowers. So, and mine had a succulent on it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's classy. Mm Mm-hmm. How about you, Jill? <laughs> um, my mother-in-law loves to garden. Oh my gosh, so she does. I remember got that. flowers galore in her backyard, and that was one of the things that like has always been special about um, mine and Eric's relationship is that like he's always picked me flowers. Um, so that happened day of our wedding. Like he picked my bouquet. Um, from Ooh. his mom's garden. Yeah. And I only had one bridesmaid, which was my sister. So the flowers that he picked also went into her bouquet. So there was like a friend that day who arranged the bouquet. Um, and then, yeah, similar thing, like centerpieces. I, actually, I didn't use any flowers for my centerpieces. I went the more like wood, 
stick, burlap, candle. I think I had like some greenery that I had like cut from our yard or something. Um, so yeah, flowers didn't cost us anything <laughs> either. Although we did have real flowers that mm-hmm. day that were beautiful. And like for us just had like a lot of meaning for our relationship. And yeah, that's awesome. And I've heard of people going to Trader Joe's and getting uh-huh. bouquets from there. Um, yeah. Those are beautiful. So there's, yeah, if you're, again, like using a venue that doesn't need a lot of decoration, then you can go like less is more on the flower route and you don't have to sacrifice real flowers. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is definitely an area that I think, you know, when friends are like, I want to help, can I do something like there are plenty of, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, I, I can think of multiple friends that I have that have a good eye with flowers. Like you don't necessarily need just a professional florist to be able to do flowers. And I think this could be like a really good gift that some friends could give you. Like, yeah, there's five girls getting together day of the wedding, day before the wedding that are, you know, going to go find cheap flowers. They're going to buy them and they're going to make up the arrangements and and put them out. Like there are like even creative ways that you can have real flowers and like beautiful arrangements done by friends who want to give you a gift. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So uh, we would be remiss to talk about weddings and not talk about wedding freebies. Yeah. Uh, So we found two places online uh, where we can get some good freebies. Uh, the first is weddingchicks.com. And I found that these are free invitations that don't suck. Uh, and by <laughs> suck, I mean my mom said that my invitations looked like birthday party invitations. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a compliment. Yeah. And these don't look like birthday party invitations. Even though I didn't think mine did, uh, she was just upset that there were no ribbons or burlap. I had a very, it was like art deco themed. So I, you know, we had differing tastes on what we wanted for my wedding. And you're going to have all kinds of opinions coming Mm -hmm. at you. So So, just let it roll off the back. You know, and if you're going to take somebody else's advice, the best thing you can do is spend as little money doing it as possible. (laughs) So, uh, and the other one is from the balance.com. I love the balance because they have the best list of free things for everything. Um, and this one is free wedding stuff. We will put links to both of these websites in the show notes and, uh, you can browse and see what you can get for free. So, that is all we have for today. Anything uh, anything left from you, Jill? No, I like it. I like free stuff. Ditto. Ditto. Uh, and let us know in our Facebook group if you want to see more free things. And I don't know why you wouldn't, but... <laughs> but we want to hear it from you. We want to yeah, know we, how bad, how bad do you want free tell stuff? Tell me how bad you want to see free things. So. <laughs> all right. Um, as always... Things. I love it. As always, uh, if you love uh, saving money and being frugal, uh, definitely subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. That is the best way to help more people find out about the podcast and help them save some money as well. And uh, you can find out where we're at on social at frugalfriendspodcast.com. Other than that, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriani. That was beautiful, Joe. Yeah, I hope that makes it in there. I hope Eric says I'm not pitch perfect, but try me now. (laughs) We should definitely have bloopers at the end of our after the music (laughs) plays. I think that would be perfect.
<laughs> okay. If we say enough funny stuff. We will definitely say enough funny stuff. <laughs> we will. I like your confidence. Fake it till you make it. All right. <laughs> A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.